Divine Truth Assistance Group. Group Assistance Sessions Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action. This recording is from the Understanding God's Loving Laws Group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the Introducing Soul Specific Principles presentation, Mary introduces the Soul Specific Principles session by examining the concept of Soul Specific Principles, summarizing each principle and introducing other subjects regarding God, law, authority, and principles included in the next two-day session, recorded on the 25th of November, 2016, in Newseville, Queensland, Australia. I'm just going to spend a, a half hour talking you through what we're going to really explain to you in detail in the next couple of days. So our third session is all about soul-specific principles. So even though in session two we focused you on how the principle applies to you because you are a human soul, in this one we're really talking about principles that apply specifically to the human soul, to God's highest creation. So let's have a little look at what we're going to talk about. So again, Everything we're discussing is only some of what, what applies. So there's so many more principles that we could have discussed. There's so much more we could say. But in this session, we're going to discuss some of the principles that determine laws that govern the potential of the human soul within the universe. We're going to talk about how the so human soul progresses or evolves or regresses and devolves through the universe and how to obtain these potentials. You can see why we think it's kind of a special session. Yeah, all right. Now, this is where your diagram changes up a bit. So, God is still this infinite entity with character and attributes and desires. God still has all these principles that govern law but what we're going to introduce you to in this, in this session is that there's a soul layer. We're going to call it, there's a, I'll put it all up so I can talk through it all at once. There we go. All right. So we've got God's principles that govern this soul layer and actually a soul universe. So this is a place where souls exist, unified souls. And there's specific laws and principles operating upon us because we are, exist in this universe. And then we have laws of physical laws. And by that we mean it's not just physical as in um, what you would call your physical body. We're talking physical and metaphysical governing what happens in this physical layer, if you like. So again, don't get too hung up because Jesus is going to go through this with you in depth and answer a lot of your specific questions about this because we know we haven't really brought this to your attention before. Um, but basically the thing to grasp is, is that your physical and spirit body live, exist within this physical layer we're calling this universe, whereas your soul and all souls, in fact, exist in a soul universe. So if you think back to the hierarchy principle, remember all of God's creation exists within a hierarchy. So we're really not breaking the universe to say that there could be universes that exist in hierarchy, hey? Yeah, all right. So let me just... So God's creation, the highest creation of your human soul, exists in this universe soul layer. And that's all of God's children, whether, they've, whether they have already a spirit body and physical body in the physical layer, so we call that pre-incarnation, or each of us. Each of us are existing actually in our soul state in this soul universe. But we're not yet aware of it and you'll learn how you become aware of it. Okay. And these lower creations, as I mentioned, the spirit body, the physical body, and physical and metaphysical creatures are all existing in this universal physical layer of the universe. 
Rachel. I'm not going to answer too many questions about it because I know Jesus is going to explain it in depth. I was just wondering if our soul is in a unified state in that layer. Yes, remember Jesus has already talked this week about the fact that the soul is always unified, but there's the illusion of separation. So you can say that all these souls are really unified, but most of them are unconscious of that unification, aren't they? Yeah. All right. So we kind of clear with that, just okay with it conceptually. That's all you need to be at this point because we'll talk more about it. All of the other principles will give you more understanding of that whole thing. Awesome. Okay. So these principles that you're going to talk about, um, they allow the human soul half, and remember it's only the illusion that you're a half, um, and the complete soul, the potential of expression while connected to the spirit and physical bodies in the physical universe. And they also allow the human soul's potential in that soul universe. So you can see why we haven't really talked about this before now, because it's really next level, isn't it? You know, really we've just got a a lot of us have been focused on getting ourselves right in this physical uh, level. But actually learning these principles and learning how it all fits together It can be, you can supersede a lot of the work that you're you're really focusing on here and now. You can make, you can find it easier. All right. It also, what we, the principles allow the human soul's potential in other universes that may come into existence due to the future transformation of our soul. So that's another whole wow, isn't it? Like, yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, we've lost our thing again. Okie doke. They also allow the potential discovery of higher parts of the human soul which have either come into existence or have always been present but can only exist in higher universes. So you can see this is where we, we, don't, we know these principles, so we know there's potentials, but we're not even sure really what might be there yet. But by understanding the principles, we can extrapolate, oh, could be, yeah and also the potential of the human soul to create higher universes, so above the soul universe. There we go. Okie doc. So, in order to... uh, (laughs) Is there a a few faces of like... (laughs) No way. (laughs) Cool. I, I think that's awesome that you're suitably awed... (laughs) <laughs> because it is pretty uh, out there, isn't it? Yeah. But you'll have to wait on the edge of your seat until Jesus gets up here to explain it all in deep <laughs> Okay. All right. What I do need to do, though, is take you through some of the definitions we're going to be using. These are crucial. And some of them you'll have, you'll have read already and some we've used previously, but they are quite Im- important. Now, something I, I think there's a typo in probably in your, in your outlines. So under hierarchical universes, so I'll read the correct definition, they can be constructed, each one governing and containing multiple universes of the lower hierarchical type. So these hierarchical universes, and we've just introduced you to this soul universe, which is higher in the hierarchy. But in your, in your outlines, you're going to have multiple previously existing universes. That's a typo. That shouldn't be there, okay? So it should, it should read as this and containing multiple universes of the lower hierarchical type. Okay. That sounds all right. That's in harmony with the principle we've learned, yep. Yeah? All right. Physical universes are the lowest human-based hierarchical universes and are the physical and spiritual universes, complete with all the spheres that you've learned about from Jesus before now, able to be perceived through the senses of the physical and spiritual bodies. Make sense? Yep. Okay. And the soul universe, which is what we've just introduced you to, is the current highest human-based hierarchical universe. It can only be be perceived by the soul in a self-aware state and also contains unaware souls. So in order to be self-aware, we have to have removed that perceived separation, don't we? Yeah, yeah. 
Mon, are we getting technical into technical questions? If we bring the mic to Mon. I'm just struggling with the first three definitions, Mary. The first three yeah, of like the universes? Yeah, that's just me. So you've got the physical universe. So that's everything you've been learning about from Jesus before now. So that's the earth, the universe as we understand it physically, as well as all the spheres. Yeah. Yep. So that's the physical universe. The soul universe is something new that you're going to learn about this next couple of days. But that's where the unified soul, unaware or aware, exists, always exists. We're, we're existing there right now, but we're attached to physical and spiritual bodies that are in the physical universe. So there's a connection between them, if you like. And the idea of hierarchical universes is that universes exist in a hierarchy, just like creation and law, and the soul universe is higher in the hierarchy than the physical one. Sure. Could I ask? I, no. I think we leave it there, and if there's more questions, Jesus can explain it more. All right. Okay. So let's get on to this definition of human will. So, human will is the genuine personal expression of the gift of free will. And you learnt all about the gift of free will in your first assistance group. It's determined by the current soul-based emotional condition. So currently, right now, it's developed by desire, is measured by its relative harmony with God's principles, and drives the thoughts, beliefs, attitudes, actions, allowance of inspiration and response to memories of the individual right now. Okay? Sound all right? Yep. Now, human desire or aspiration. This is the genuine expression of current soul-based faith. It can only occur in self-aware beings and it's measured by its relative harmony with God's principles, but it's expressed as an intended or aspired to soul-based emotional state. It motivates future will-based decisions, choices and actions and differs from instinctual need. So you're starting to see this delineation between will, as I am right now, what I do right now, desire, that's something entirely different. It's what drives my future direction. And it's based on faith. Okay. You can see why we talked a lot to you about faith in the first two groups, hey? Yeah. Okay. Sin is the existence of will or desire in disharmony with God's principles, whether the will or desire is acted upon or not. So again, as we've been talking about this morning, can just be the ideas in there, the thoughts, the emotions, the beliefs. That sin can exist whether, and it's measured, whether we're in disharmony with God's principles. All right. Okay. So we're going to talk about two types of redemption, if you like. The first one is human redemption. This is the process of, re of re sorry, this is the process of paying the penalty for and removing sin from the human soul in order to recover the human soul back to its created, pristine condition. It's a self-reliant process that does involve repentance for wrongdoing and desiring forgiveness. So, we're, But we're self-reliant in that process. It's clear. So that's the human version of redemption, if you like. Then we have divine redemption. So this occurs through a personal relationship with God. That's the only way it can happen. And it's the process of willfully desiring and engaging God's help to remove sin from the soul. So the first process, human redemption, that's all about me. I'm self-reliant. This one, actually, I'm saying, God, could you help me remove this sin from my soul? And it also recognises with all humility that only God can remove the effects of our sin, of all the effects of our sin. Uh, and it asks God to help removing the cause of sin, to receive God's truth on all matters. As you can see, it's a very self-responsible state. Um, and to eventually obtain immortality. Okay, 
everyone okay with that one? Yeah. And transformation. Transformation is the potentiality offered to the human soul that has a sincere and passionate desire to exceed its original created condition and its potentials as a human. So this is the, this is the, it's only offered to the, to the soul that has those desires and with the desire to allow God's personal love to be absorbed by the soul into an, and, and turn it into an immortal divine creature with the potential of infinite expansion. Transformation principles are the most complex principles. And they're the last set of principles that we'll be presenting to you in this group. But you can see, even if you think about the principle of hierarchy, that each higher creation, each higher law, each higher universe, each higher principle would naturally be more complex, wouldn't it? That's, that's how hierarchy is dictated. So this one, very high principle, a lot of complexity in it. Yeah. Okay. All right, so who remembers our foundation principles? What were they? Love, L love and truth. Love. Yep. Economy and function. Economy and function. Permanence. Permanence and scope. Top of the class, everyone is awesome. <laughs> I don't know if my brain this morning could have put all them in proper order. All right. And our next set of principles, which we just reviewed in the homework, were order principles. Hierarchy, governance, responsibility, and compensation. Beautiful. Now, our soul specific principles are going to be human will, desire, and you're going to hear those today back to back. Jesus is going to do human will and human desire back to back. And then you'll have one long QA about both of them because you'll see that they're quite related. Um, and then tomorrow, you'll hear no. Later today, you'll hear redemption. No, you'll hear God's authority, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow, you'll hear redemption and transformation. So that's the, that's the way to round out the group, is these amazingly complex but full of potential um, principles. All right. So will. As we've, just, as we've just learned in our definition, but in this talk, we're going to talk about how human will is driven by the soul's current condition and determines what we'll automatically do in the current moment unless we have a different desire to either progress or regress. Because we can actually desire to go one way or the other. But will is what, is what automatically happens right now. Desire, as you can probably tell, uh, is driven by what the soul currently has faith in. And you'll learn a lot more about this from Jesus, how this all works and why it's so important. And it determines what the soul desires in and for its future. It can be positive and drive progression or negative and drive regression. All right, redemption that you'll hear about tomorrow is the process by which the human itself can return either to its original created condition, the human re redemption definition we just talked about, or to a new condition which prepares the soul for a relationship with God. And transformation... This is all, so we're going to talk all about the potential offered to you as a human soul when you develop a sincere and passionate desire to exceed your original created condition and potentials as a human. This is the principle that allows God's personal love to be absorbed by us and allows that love to transform us into an immortal divine creature with the potential of infinite expansion. Alrighty. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. And as I mentioned earlier, it's it's the most these are the most complex principles. Yeah. Okie dokie. Our other presentations, we're going to talk about God's authority. 
And if you think about what we've talked about already so far, we've been stirring you up with this human law comparison and the law-related attitudes and emotions and then the big hangover. This is where we get to hear the truth about God's authority. So what does loving authority actually look like? Because a lot of us associate, well, we think that's an oxymoron, don't we? Loving and authority. <laughs> but the truth is something very lovely. And Jesus will talk to you about God's authority. It's going to analyse the subject of loving authority, what God's authority is, what God has authority over, because it's not everything, remember, and what we have authority over and the results of our personal acceptance or rejection of God's authority. And our last presentation of the group is going to be knowing and loving God. And you're going to learn about the different ways you can come to know and love God and how you can do it a quick way or how you can do it a really snail's pace way. Yeah. <laughs> you can see that perhaps some of these principles we talk about in the next couple of days are good. <laughs> <laughs> Those principles. <laughs> That's how exciting they are. <laughs> Uh, are going to be, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> they're going to be involved in, in how you come to know and love God the quick way. <laughs> See, I, I think our spirit friends are helping us to <laughs> lighten the mood a bit today. We're a bit heavy this morning. <laughs> All right. So we're going to, in this last presentation, we're going to analyse the method and um, methods and processes that can be used to discover and understand God's loving laws and present, we'll present to you the only possible successful method. The one that's going to work completely and absolutely in, in that goal to know and love God. Alrighty. We'll introduce the concept that knowing God's principles creates a true awareness of sin. Which is pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It helps us be aware of sin, which, which means that we can change. Yeah. All right. Okie doke. So just a reminder, we've introduced you to now this new soul universe. Um, but all of the basic principles still apply to what we've learned. That is that God is this infinite being with a character and nature that's infinite and perfected. God has principles that govern all of law and they're not different because they govern, they're higher up here in our diagram. Then we have the, the soul layer laws, if you like, the laws that govern specifically the human soul, and that governs the, the soul universe. Then we have these, these physical laws, or and when we say physical, we have to remember we're meaning sort of metaphysical or spirit and spirit body based, as well as physical, uh, as we would call it on Earth those laws, and then they are governing this physical universe that we live in, which includes all of the spheres that we've learnt about as well. So it's still massive, um, <laughs> but it gets even bigger, is what we're going to learn about. Yeah. Alrighty. So as I've mentioned, we're going to discuss some of the principles that determine the laws that govern the potential of the human soul within the universe. We're going to learn how the human soul can progress or regress or evolve versus devolve through the universe and how to obtain your, your potentials as this human soul, these awesome potentials. Alrighty. Just a reminder, Jesus is going to, he's actually going to today present to you the will and desire principles with some of our examples because you've got the long Q&A afterwards. So previous to this, he's been just presenting the, the basics of the principle and going straight to your questions. Today, he's actually going to give you a more full presentation. And that's good in a lot of ways because these are, as I've mentioned earlier, really important principles for you to grasp. And so we want to spend a bit of time on that. Um, and you're welcome to ask questions throughout that initial presentation of the principles. As we keep saying, each discussion is a very basic introduction to the topic. As you can imagine, when you start to do your homework, hopefully you start to recognise, wow, 
this is like bigger than I thought. There's a lot to this. And so um, this is why I encouraged you to keep thinking about it, keep reflecting about it, because we will be using these principles to expand upon in, our, in the rest of our Education in Love series. Yep. Uh, there's lots more principles that we would love to have discussed with you, but we just don't have time. But these ones that we're covering are really crucial to your development and your potentially eternal life. Yeah. Alrighty. So this begins our soul-specific principles session for the next couple of days. And our next presentation is going to be human will principles. Jesus will join you for that. Um, I need to remind you that we're going into human will principles followed by human desire principles with no break. So if you that so that's an hour and twenty. It's not like superhuman effort for your bladder, but you might you might want to make sure you visit the bathroom in this. We'll, we'll come back at five past twelve, so that's ten minutes from now, uh, and get started on human will principles. Also, your question sheets. A lot of your question sheets will be taken before the lunch break, even though your Q&A is after the lunch break. That's just so that Jesus can have a chance to review them. But I'll try and leave one or two up the back, just in case you get inspired during the presentation and you want to add something quickly. Sound all right? All right. Thanks, guys.